Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Good morning. It's a chilly day out here in the desert. We had a big system go through, a lot of wind, and the temperatures plummeted. This morning was cold, 42 degrees Fahrenheit. This morning when I woke up, which was about as cold as it got here, or as it got down in Yuma, at least uh, in the middle of winter. But, eh, it's okay. We're gonna have one of those days. So, as the title of the video, uh, states, I'm going to show you how you can decode weather satellites without a radio. Well, at least not without your own radio. We're going to be using some resources on the web, and we'll talk about those. So weather satellites. Um, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, NOAA, has three active weather satellites up there that you can decode yourself. These things are uh, pretty big too, man. I was just, I was researching them for this video, and let me show you the uh, the uh, Wikipedia page on one of them, NOAA 19, and uh, a lot of information on here. And I'll put this link in the uh, video description down below if you want to look at it. But you can uh, you can kind of see how big these are. Uh, well, well, we'll get to that. Let's uh, let's first talk about what the what the things got as far as instruments. Uh, you'd think that they just do images of the clouds on the ground, you know. Uh, but they actually have quite a few instruments here, as you can see, um, that record and use various data. Uh, and they put together an image that they transmit down to Earth continuously. So as, as the satellite's orbiting, it's scanning the ground with its instruments and creating an image line by line as it's orbiting, as it's moving across the uh, ground and continuously transmits that image. So as the satellite passes overhead, the image that you will decode is looking straight down at you, real time. Uh, it's pretty cool. And I think that it's a composite image that uses data from all of the different instruments on the satellite, because it will produce images even if it's night and it's dark. You can still see clouds and ground features. So it has quite a few instruments, and it's, it's absolutely huge. Now, NOAA 19, during manufacture, they had an accident. If we look at this uh, image here, uh, the stand that they had it on uh, looks like something went wrong and it tilted. See how it's tilted? And the whole thing fell over and hit the ground. Um, they had to repair it, and so that, that delayed launch and it going into service, and they had to repair it. But the reason that I brought this picture up is because it shows you the size of the satellite. There's a door back here, so you can see exactly how big this thing is that's up there in space. <laughs> it's, it's massive. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, the weather satellites, there's three of them. Uh, NOAA 19, 18, and 15. And they broadcast on 137 megahertz, uh, which you can pick up with a lot of different radios if you have a radio. Um, it's wide FM, 40, at least 40 kilohertz bandwidth, maybe a little bit wider if you want to get a good signal. So you do need to have a radio that does wide FM if you're doing it with your own radio. I've received these with my ICOM 705. Um, of course, the most popular thing that people like to use is they like to use uh, like an RTL SDR or one of these one of these little software defined radios. This is my AirSpy HF Plus, which I've used to decode the satellites with GQRX. You could use it with you know these things with all kinds of software out there for software defined receivers, um, and have no problem at all copying these things. But NOAA 15 is at uh, 137.62. NOAA 18 137.9125. And NOAA 19, 137.1 megahertz. There's also a group of Russian weather satellites uh, referred to as METOR, M-E-T-O-R, or M-E-A-T-O-R, I'm not sure which, but anyway, um, that also are in the same range, 137 megahertz. So if you have a radio, you can use those frequencies to receive your satellites and then decode them, and we'll talk about the decoding software uh, momentarily. But... Um, we're talking about decoding the satellites without a radio. And how would you do that? Well, if we go back over here, there is websdr.org. WebSDRs are 
software-defined radios that have a little computer for a server that are on the internet and use a browser interface to allow you to use that radio wherever it is on the planet to receive whatever it can receive. You can use these to monitor the HF spectrum, two meters or whatever. It depends on who set it up and what bands and frequencies they decided to use. And if we look at the web SDR page, and I'll scroll down to the bottom of the page here and you'll see the map. I don't know why they don't put the map at the top of the page. I think the map should be at the top of the page and then all the data. But we can see here on the map that there are lots of these things, 185 of them in this list all over the globe. Uh, each one is set up a little differently and covers different frequency ranges. If I click on one of them, it tells me a little bit about it and what ranges it covers. So this one covers uh, two meters and the UHF amateur bands. Uh, this one here covers um, uh, some of the HF spectrum and the two meter band and so on. Hunting around, I found a few of these that actually have the, um, the weather sats. Let me find that one here. Where are you? So number 71 on the map here is the European Space Agency Radio Club. And if we look right here, it covers the weather satellite range. So the European Space Agency Radio Club, uh, for, for where it is, we have here JO22FF. That is the Maidenhead grid locator. So that's what we need to know. That tells us where this is over in Europe. We can find it on the map, but that's going to take some time to try to find number 71. But as long as I have that grid, JO22FF, I can plug that into my satellite tracker and set it up as a ground station. So let's go ahead and launch GPredict. So here's GPredict. And I've currently got Kingman set as my ground station. Well, if I want to predict the next satellite pass for one of the weather satellites, I need to create a ground station for that web SDR that I'm going to use. So we'll go to, I think it's preferences. Yeah, ground stations. And you can see I've already added it in here using that grid, JO22FF. When I hit add new locator right here, I can put in that grid locator and it'll find it for me. So I've already added that one. I'll select that as my ground station and hit OK. Now here's a bug in, in GPredict that they've never fixed. It doesn't update the map right away. I need to relaunch the program in order for it to update my ground station. So now EU Space Club is located right up here in Northern Europe, and that is the ground station that I'll be using uh, to track the satellites. And the next pass is the ISS, but I can I can look at one of them. Let's say uh, NOAA, uh, NOAA 19 looks like it's going to come close. Show next pass. And yeah, here we go. We're going to have a pass at 9.49 in 49 minutes. Its maximum elevation is going to be 44 degrees up off the horizon. So that's a pretty good pass. So I can use my satellite tracker now to decide or to determine when the next uh, weather satellite is going to pass over that location and I should be able then to receive it using that web SDR. So let's go to the European Space Agency Radio Club. I'll click here and it'll launch the SDR. It's connecting to it and now I am, there we go. I'm receiving, over there in Europe, I'm receiving the frequencies where the satellite is. Now that was NOAA 19 that was uh, going to be doing a pass, and NOAA 19 is 137.1 megahertz, right? So I'll come back here to the SDR, and uh, we'll tune it to 137.1. All right, so that's tuned to 137.1. Now remember I said it's wide FM, right? So I'm going to set this to FM. I'm going to zoom in on it. Now on this web SDR, you can tune it by grabbing this middle part here and shifting it around, right? Put it back to about one. I can also tune the filter skirts. So remember I said you needed a really wide filter? We'll pull that out and we'll pull the lower sideband filter out. 
My bandwidth is now 60 kilohertz, as you can see right there, which is plenty wide. And in fact, when I start receiving the satellite, I might bring those in just a bit in order to um, get a cleaner signal from it. But that's all I really need to do. Now I just wait for the satellite pass. And when the satellite pass comes through, many of these SDRs have this audio recording option here. So I could turn the volume up. Let me squelch this. Okay, I could turn the volume up, and as soon as I started getting signal from the satellite, I could hit start recording, and the SDR itself will record the audio file for me. And when it's done, I can then download the file, and I've got my satellite pass that I can pull into my decoding software. Easy peasy, right? I'll, be re I'll actually be able to receive the weather satellite from over there in Europe as it passes over Europe. Now I have gone through the web SDR list and searched for how many of them cover that range. And I found four one day, five another day. So, so they come and go. Sometimes they're up, sometimes they're down. Um, so there was one in Pennsylvania uh, that, that uh, um, had a good antenna and provided a good signal. This European Space Agency radio club um, has a, a great antenna and gets you really good passes. So once you've captured a pass and you've recorded its audio to a file, how do you decode that into an image? Well, there's a very common program that a lot of people use called um, WX2IMG. But it's old and it's not maintained. Uh, it does work, but it's a little fiddly to work with. I found another one that is currently under development. So it's being maintained, it's being updated and modified. And that's called NOAA-APT. Here is the web page for NOAA-APT. It's available for uh, Linux and Windows uh, and Mac if you build it from source. Um, it works pretty well. It's a little buggy, but it, he's, like he said, he's under development. So hopefully the author might see this video and one of the bugs I'm going to show you will be uh, represented. But uh, it's a nice little program. It does a great job of decoding, lots of information here on the web page, and again, I'll put a link to the uh, web page in the description below. So you download this, and you can use this to decode your uh, received file. Now, I'll show you how that works. I've already downloaded a pass, so we'll uh, go ahead and run NOAA-apt. And here is the program. All right, real easy to work with. First thing we do is we choose an input file here. So I will pick. So I pick my file that I recorded from the web SDR. Uh, you can just hit decode and go with the defaults and it should do a good job. And here we see the bug. It doesn't look like anything happened, right? I don't see an image. If I go over here to the processing tab, where you can set things like false color and map overlays and all that, there's this rotate image right here. It's set to auto by default. I have found that if I change that and hit process, boom, there's the image. <laughs> so this is an image um, that, I de that I received from the uh, European Space Agency site. And I think, I think that's Spain over there. So let's Go back to auto and hit process again. It'll rotate it properly. And there we go. We can see our image. Yeah, this is Spain down here, I think. So this is Europe. And this was at night. Um, I was, it was uh, daytime for me, and this is on the other side of the planet. This was at night. And as you can see, um, you can still see clouds and stuff. A little bit of noise up here at the top as the satellite was coming into range of their antenna. And a little bit of noise here at the bottom as uh, it was coming out of range and I stopped the recording. But as you can see, we got a really good decode from that satellite as it passed over Europe. Now we can hit this add false color process and it will attempt to guess where the water is and give it a blue tint and such. And the clouds are white. So you can sort of add a false color to the image um, with that option. There is also a map overlay which doesn't seem to work in the European countries, but it does work in the U.S., where it'll actually lay a grid over the, uh, over the image with the countries outlined and such. 
So again, this is under development. He's probably going to add more maps and fix the overlays down the road. But anyway, NOAA-APT gives us a nice, easy way to decode these satellite images. Once we got them decoded, you can come over here to saving. You can pick an output file name, test image dot, and I think it's PNG that it saves it in. And then I can hit save and it saves the image out. And then we can go in and look at it, process it, you know, crop it out, do whatever we want with it. So NOAA-APT is a really nice, um, nice little program for decoding the images. The other one, as I said, is WX to IMG. There's plenty of tutorials out there. That's the one that most people are using. Uh, I just ran across this one, so I thought I'd share it with you. Since it's currently under development, it's undoubtedly going to improve as time goes on and perhaps have features added to it. At least it's being worked on. That other program hasn't been worked on in 10 years, I think. So <laughs> it works, but this one is, is, uh, is going to be improving as time goes on. So that's the long and short of it. Using web SDRs that cover the satellite frequency range, you can actually decode weather satellites yourself without even having a radio. Now, obviously, uh, having a radio set up gives you more options. You get a much cleaner um, signal if you have a good antenna. You can build your own antennas. You can build a, um, a turnstile or egg beater or um, quadrifilier hex or helical antenna, which is kind of like taking two loops, interlacing them, and then putting a twist of 90 degrees on the top loop so the wires kind of like a helix go around. And that way, as the satellite passes overhead and its, its transmission is coming at you from different angles and different polarizations, that antenna always picks up some of it. Uh, you don't need to be fancy though. In fact, I think what I will do in the next video is I will show you how I decode the weather satellites using my air spy and my slim jim antenna just a simple vertical antenna and how good and high quality the passes can be in fact i've i'll put an image up here of a couple of the passes that i've decoded so you can see exactly how high of a quality of image i'm getting with my own local receiver so there you go uh, a simple tip you can use web sdrs to decode weather satellites elsewhere on the earth uh, without anything but a browser and a little extra piece of software. Hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.